All right, welcome everyone. Uh, I have pushed the record button and uh, we are kicking off the second uh, Gimlet online meetup. This meetup is going to be about integrating Gimlet with CICD uh, solutions. And uh, to be more uh, exact, uh, we will start with some news, uh, some Gimlet news, some releases, new features, etc. And then uh, we're going to go into uh, interaction with CICD, how GitOps uh, interacts with CICD and uh, how we believe uh, GitOps broke the CICD feedback loop and how can we uh, reconstruct that feedback loop. And as you can see, the second point is going to be about uh, green build means a successful deploy. So this is what I mean when I talk about the feedback loop. And uh, I'm also going to show how Gimlet works with GitHub Actions. Obviously, there is an action for it, and uh, I'm going to in depth of how does that work. So news, uh, just a bit of a buzz around Gimlet. Uh, I was in a conference just last, or actually at the beginning of, of October in uh, Scotland. Uh, I uh, presented Gimlet on stage and uh, that's uh, the picture from. Um, I'm also going tomorrow to, to Transylvania, uh, to Romania, to talk about cloud and um, actually service mesh. So uh, that's going to happen tomorrow. And the uh, 9th of November, uh, I'm going to talk about Gimlet and GitOps and ClickOps in Olborg, Denmark. And there are some cloud uh, podcast uh, recordings going on as well. Uh, the feed feedback was quite good in uh, Scotland, so this is just a few tweets uh, that I uh, saw when I got off the stage. Basically, um, there was a great reception, and not just the reception, I also saw some uh, installation efforts after uh, this talk and throughout the past month as well. So that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, we have passed the 100 stars mark on GitHub, so thank you very much for all of you who are part of this community and showing up to meetups and asking questions and trying out the product. So thank you, thank you very much. All right, and the, in the news section, uh, we have a new release. Uh, all three components, keep that the dashboard and the CLI got a new version. And besides a bunch of uh, bug fixes and uh, workflow uh, adjustments, uh, we have a main theme going on, and this is about CI/CD. If you are a Gimlet user, and if you have integrated Gimlet into your CI/CD pipeline, and you are, if you are shipping the artifact, just a TLDR uh, for you, is that now if you ship the artifact to Gimlet, now you can uh, provide a wait flag uh, combined with a timeout flag, so you can actually see uh, how Gimlet, uh, wait and see how Gimlet uh, processes those artifacts. And if you want to uh, do the integration with your CI uh, pipeline in a more synchronous and more uh, CI controlled way, then there is also a deploy flag. So actually the, this plugin is able to make uh, deployments on demand in Gimlet, but later on this, uh, throughout this uh, meetup. All right, so the infamous how GitOps broke the CI CD feedback loop. So. Uh, let me just walk you through uh, this diagram. So you as a developer, you do your code changes, you put to Git, a push to Git, and then your CI CD pipeline kicks off. It builds the, you know, the, the software, the Docker image and so on. And in the CI CD pipeline, so in some way, uh, it makes a change into your GitOps repository. This is basically where your um, Kubernetes YAML files live. And uh, that's, all, all, that's all nice and, and, and everything. Uh, and of course, you are aware that there is a GitOps controller that synchronizes this desired state onto the cluster. So this is Kubernetes. These are your applications. And Flux is sitting in this cluster configured to read and pull uh, this uh, Git. Uh, repository and apply uh, the desired uh, YAMLs on the cluster. And sort of this is the, the, the place where, you know, deployment is happening, uh, where um, pods are starting up and Flux has a few uh, possibilities to notify you about this, this action, like how did it go? Like, did it fail? Did it succeed? And uh, naturally there is uh, like a, a Slack notification provider uh, that Flux calls. And then in your chat notifications, you are able to tell whether the deploy succeeded or not. 
And uh, besides the, the, the Slack notification, uh, Flux is able to also set a commit statuses uh, back on the GitOps repository. So on the GitOps commit, you would see like a green tick mark, like, hey, this commit is deployed. And it also has a general webhook provider. But uh, the problem is that you as a developer, you push your code, you looked at the CI build, and the CI build basically at this point, once it pushed the change to the GitOps repo, it, it is done, it is green. And you basically lo lost the ability to, to look at your CI pipeline and tell whether your deploy is done or not, because Flux works in an asynchronous decoupled way. It is looking at the re repo and it's, it deploys on its own time, on its own schedule. And even though it, it's, it is able to do um, some notifications like the ones I uh, described. Uh, CICD does not know too much about this. It doesn't know anything about uh, this action, to be honest. So if it succeeded or if it failed, you have other means to, to, to discover. And actually this is uh, what this meetup is about, like how to reconstruct uh, this uh, green build means successful deploy CI CD heuristic. So this is your model in your brain. If CI is green, I have deployed my code. I am good to go to, the, to my next, next task. And for that, um, my favorite is to use the Flux's general webhook provider. So basically Flux, once it's applied uh, all the changes, it is able to call a webhook. And then, uh, you know, it, is able to tell that this commit was applied and this is the outcome and so on. And these were the tra state transitions and whatnot. So naturally uh, emerges the need to, to have like a place to call, uh, which is able to accept this webhook. And on this uh, generic uh, diagram, I just called this uh, the GitOps brain. So Flux is uh, calling the GitOps brain uh, with the webhook uh, payload. So this GitOps brain is now aware of the changes. And now the only thing we need to do in our CICD pipeline is to basically uh, pull this, uh, this GitOps brain component that, uh, hey, I pushed this uh, commit to the GitOps repo. Is it deployed yet? Is it deployed yet? And at some point, the GitOps brain is going to tell that, like, yes, it is deployed. And then CICD is finally able to say like, oh, great, everything is fine. And it's, it's a green build or, oh no, something bad happened. So it's a, it's a red build. So basically, basically, this is the model to, to reconstruct this feedback loop within CICD. Uh, just going back to the, to the other existing providers, there are some other possibilities as well, like the, the commit status hook, um, places the, the status on this commit. So potentially CICD could pull this commit uh, status in the GitHub API or, or, or GitLab API. That's also a possibility. Um, I favor this GitOps brain approach, uh, not surprisingly, because we already have this GitOps brain. This is uh, our Gimlet D component. This is our, uh, Gimlet, uh, this is our GitOps uh, release manager. So how does the flow look uh, with Gimlet? Uh, on the cluster side, everything is the same. There is Flux, there are your applications. Um, there is Gimlet, the dashboard, the CLI. And of course, in the cluster, there is a the little agent running, which is telling the dashboard like what's going on in the cluster. But you as a developer, you are sitting in front of your laptop and you push your code to the application repo. And then right after CI kicks off and CI, once it's, you know, did its job, built the Docker image, it is asking Gimlet D that, uh, hey, I have a new uh, version for my software. Please decide as you please, like whether release or not, because Gimlet D is the release manager. So CI tells Gimlet D there's a new version and then Gimlet D makes the GitOps commit if it uh, needs to do that. And then, you know, Flux reads the GitOps commit, applies on the cluster, and then using this uh, generic webhook provider, it is telling Gimlet D that, yes, I deployed this commit, commit uh, to the cluster. So that's cool. And then CI is able to ask Gimlet D uh, whether the commit is deployed. So, so basically, it's the same uh, model as before. It's just... Uh, uh, change the, the labels on the on the boxes, and basically this is how it fits to the Gimlet um, model. So 
Yeah. And how does it look in your CI/CD? Well, it uh, looks like uh, any other uh, step. Uh, if you are using GitHub Actions, this is calling an action. If it's Circle CI, you are calling a command or a job uh, from the Gimlet orb. So basically, there are prepackaged ways to, to work with uh, Gimlet from CI CD. Um, just to look into a very simplistic um, configuration, I have a demo application which has just a single job which is called build, and then um, it checks out the code, builds a Docker image, and then at the very end, it basically connects to Gimlet D through the Gimlet server token and the Gimlet uh, uh, token. And uh, basically, it ships a bunch of information about the software that was just um, put into the artifact, which you can then deploy later on. And then Gimlet D, um, so basically this is what we, we, we looked at. CI CD did the test, the build step, built the Docker image, Docker image, and then called uh, the Gimlet uh, step to deploy. And then Gimlet D gets a large piece of information. This is like a giant JSON file. Um, we just call it the Gimlet artifact. And then uh, it looks at, at the Gimlet manifests. You are probably familiar with this already. Uh, this is uh, where all uh, environment-specific application deployment configuration uh, lives. The name of the app, the Helm chart to deploy, which values uh, to parameterize the Helm chart with. And then Gimlet D uh, at this step puts, uh, takes the artifact, takes the manifest, and then uh, merge them together to produce the Kubernetes YAML file. And then Gimlet D does the write to the GitOps repo. So basically, uh, this is what actually Gimlet D does, nothing more, nothing less. Um, and uh, basically, uh, I showed this uh, GitHub action before, and, and you can use it in two modes. Now, uh, one is uh, to use Gimlet as just a, a simple deploy API. So uh, in, in back in the uh, original uh, model, so CICD writes uh, this GitOps repo. Uh, it is just instead of writing and, and having all the GitOps code in your CICD, you just have the code in, uh, in Gimlet D. And then Gimlet D does the merge of the artifact and the manifest has the YAML, writes it into the repo. And uh, basically in this mode, you use Gimlet D just as like an API that is able to deploy or able to write the GitOps repo. Um, this way, uh, basically, you construct your CI pipelines as you used to. Uh, you can have all kinds of workflows. Um, if you are familiar with uh, your CI's workflow in possibilities, uh, you can build all kinds of workflows. And the, the deploy step is a very explicit uh, way um, to tell Gimlet that, hey, yes, deploy. Uh, oh, deploy this version on the staging environment and deploy the uh, GitHub Actions integration sample uh, application. So this is uh, just an example run of this GitHub action, of a GitHub action with uh, relatively advanced uh, GitHub Actions workflowing possibilities, the build step, Docker build, and then um, some mm, conditions, whether it's uh, it's it's a non-main branch, so you deploy deploy preview. Whether it's a staging branch, so you whether it's it's the main branch, so you deploy on staging, and there is also like a manual approval step in your CI in this CI pipeline to deploy to production. Um, I think I th I think you've seen pipelines like this before, mm. but let me just uh, bring it up. So uh, Docker build. Uh, deploy preview basically on uh, branches that are not main, then call uh, the Gimlet deploy step uh, on the preview environment uh, with this uh, application configuration name. Staging is rather similar. It's just uh, different conditions. If it's main, then deploy on the staging env. So only the condition changes and how the deploy step is called or what parameters uh, are used to call the, the Gimlet D API. And then production 
it's all the same. It's uh, basically uh, requiring a, a manual uh, approval and uh, the Gimlet step is parameterized to deploy on the production environment. So this case, uh, all was needed uh, is some uh, CI workflowing uh, knowledge and three different uh, Gimlet uh, environment uh, configurations, one for staging, one for production, one for preview. And uh, Gimlet does not know too much about like what is what should go on which environment and when it should happen. It's all CI that is controlling uh, the deployment because this workflow is uh, is what is uh, is capturing the deploy process and deploy just acts as a dump API and, and does what it was told to do. Awesome. Um, there is another mode of operation when you work with the CI uh, with Gimlet. Uh, the other mode of operation is actually uh, the, uh, the, this was the first, this was the original mode of operation when uh, sort of we stripped all responsibilities from CI and all what we did was just uh, shipping an artifact, shipping the, the meta information about the, the version. And then uh, in, the, in the Gimlet manifest, you could have uh, deploy policies. Like if it's uh, the main branch, if it's a push event, then deploy on uh, this environment. And uh, this uh, possibility still remains. We just opened up to be a more explicit uh, CI controlled way to work with uh, with Gimlet basically. Um, what is new actually on this uh, snippet is the weight parameter. So if you use this one, then uh, whenever you ship the, the artifact, um, the CI is going to pull Gimlet and uh, it's going to wait to see like what kind of uh, um, deployments were triggered and uh, and what GitOps commits were made. Actually, I might be able to pull something like that up. So if I look up uh, the build and the shipping of the artifact, yeah. So in this case, it was uh, it was a very simple case. Uh, we shipped the artifact and the artifact didn't trigger any release policies. So it's actually in the test application, this has to be like a manual step to deploy. Mm. I wonder if uh, my demo application has something. Uh, no, this doesn't have a release policy. So how about the test application? The test application has a release policy. So if the test app pushes, uh, an artifact on staging, on on, uh, on on main, then it should go to the staging environment. So how about I just go to the test applications, mm, actions history, look at the build and see this wait function in action. No, this is actually not it. But uh, this example, uh, this uh, action run is actually a, a great example. Uh, we have shipped the artifact from Gimlet, uh, from CICD to Gimlet. First, it was not processed, then it was processed, which resulted in a, in a GitOps commit, which was first in not reconciled state, then dependency not ready in, and after like 30 seconds, it was reconciliation succeeded state. So the, the actual uh, GitOps commit was also deployed. So uh, this CI run was the perfect example how we uh, patched uh, everything up, uh, meaning that the, the CI CD pipeline was waiting uh, until the Git GitOps commit was deployed. So it's actually the point of this, uh, this uh, meetup. All right. And I actually, I just want to show you one more thing about uh, how the, the actions work. So basically, Actions are simple, are just a simple shell script. And uh, uh, what they do is that they create a Gimlet artifact with the Gimlet CLI. And then at 
later stage, it also pushes this artifact uh, to Gimlet. And uh, basically, if we have the wait flag enabled, uh, we call the Gimlet artifact track wait uh, command, and then we are going to wait until uh, the artifact is processed, and either it didn't make any GitOps commit or it made um, a couple, and then we wait until those commits are synchronized. Or uh, if we have the deploy flag uh, enabled, uh, we do a Gimlet release make an explicit call to Gimlet that, hey, please deploy this commit. And then, of course, we are tracking this release and we are going to wait until timeout. So these are simple Gimlet CLI commands uh, just, uh, just tugged nicely into uh, GitHub Actions or Circle CI orbs or Rootpacker plugins and, and so on. All right, so uh, I presented two approaches, uh, like how CICD can interact with Gimlet. And the first approach is probably uh, if you are coming from a CI um, background and you know your CI very well and, uh, and you want to orchestrate the world from your CI, then uh, the, uh, Using Gimlet as a deploy API could be your uh, your uh, entry into the Gimlet uh, universe because then you do everything as you did before. It's just that you delegate uh, the GitOps uh, templating um, and the GitOps of write uh, action to the Gimlet API. Uh, the more advanced uh, release manager approach is when Gimlet DE is uh, is basically responsible for all uh, release. Uh, related actions um, in your in your CI CD pipeline and you basically uh, delegate this work to to Gimlet D. Uh, this was the first approach in Gimlet D, like uh, how uh, it was originally envisioned. Uh, and this way basically you open up the possibility to not just have a static, a very static uh, CI CD pipeline, which is fragmented between your repositories and deploy is done uh, in one way in one of your repos and in another way of your other repo. Instead, there is a central approach to deployments, uh, which opens up the possibility to very nice features uh, like, uh, like um, this uh, approach can force some kind of um, um, release workflows. For example, uh, we can check whether this version was actually deployed before or has it been deployed before on staging. And if it wasn't, then it couldn't go to production. So if you are into that kind of strict validation, uh, you can prescribe this much more easily in a central uh, approach. And we can also mandate that only signed commits uh, can go to production. And uh, we can also do more advanced release strategies like uh, blue-green deployments or canary deploys. And of course, uh, rollbacks um, are a very essential part of your CI-CD workflow. So the central approach is able to do the rollback while your CI-CD based approach would need to spell out every single uh, special case in your uh, deployment uh, workflow to be able to do uh, rollbacks. All right, so in, in a nutshell, uh, this was it for today. Um, I wanted to highlight uh, two new features in, in Gimlet. Uh, one is uh, is the wait and timeout flags in uh, in the in the CI plugins. Basically, if you are using Gimlet in a, in a release manager approach, then uh, your CI CD is able to wait until Gimlet is done. It is and it is also able to wait until Flux is done. So your CI CD pipeline will only turn green or red uh, whether the whole uh, deployment. Uh, is, 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 is done. Um, and the other approach is, uh, is a more CI-CD centric approach or CI engine centric approach where uh, Gimlet only uh, behaves like a deploy API that you can call from your CI workflows. Uh, this way you can keep uh, the control on, in your CI and if you are or orchestrating many things in CI, then it's probably uh, the right approach for you just to, to use uh, Gimlet in a dump, a dumber uh, setup than uh, than the full blown uh, release manager option. All right, um, that was it for today. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, post it on our Discord channel and I'm happy to uh, 
bring it up next time on the on the meetup or or or, or answer it on the discord so uh thanks a lot everyone and uh see you next time